Let's just start. Good, because I have no idea. It would be really awkward to. Uh... Hey, TTT fans. <laughs> 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 welcome back yeah, to another episode yeah. of This Is Our First yeah. Time. Welcome to our first try at making content, and I have no idea how to introduce <laughs> this. Um, so this idea is um, was brought to us by Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not available on yeah. Sundays, yeah. Uh, as you'll see in the calendar. So we get a lot of questions about um, what to, how to train during the Open, and we thought, let's just put it on the board for a minute and talk about a bunch of different options. But more specifically, you need to know like what the actual goal is in the open. So we've got three different categories that Max is going to break down and walk you through like each day of the week, how that might look for the five weeks uh, doing the open. But it's an endurance sport, unless the layout changes. But if the open stays the way that it is right now, you need an engine and you need muscle endurance and you need proficiency in gymnastics to get through stage one. So if you don't develop that, you're just wasting your time. So you still do need to get stronger. You're like way off in your strength metrics. It still needs to be a prioritization, but it shouldn't be your obsession. So, uh, we kind of figured it, that the best way to do it was to split up in terms of where your plan is to finish. I don't think I, we put games up here and Mike's like, well, how many people can just like train for the games now and not even think about the open? Uh, the reality is that number of people that is literally just training through the open without worry anymore, uh, without ever having to retest is, is getting smaller and smaller. The, the testing body is such that if you make a mistake pacing and you blow up or you get a, you know, a hand tear and chest the bar pull up workout, you can be at a games level and not make it. I, I know some people were in contention last year uh, that got sick, but we're just assuming that this is the people that are almost a guarantee to make it through the open. Uh, we call the regional level, uh, what do we call it? Bubble athletes. Like yeah. People who are like probably going to finish anywhere between 15 and 40. Uh, might be like 15 and 80 now even because mm -hmm. uh, whatever um, and then we have open and we have the open category split into performance and fun um, I put the fun one up here but then I was thinking about it it's like well most people's definition of fun is doing as good as you can so they're kind of performance people but I, I'm assuming a lot of the people there are doing that uh, for classes and we don't really need to talk about the layout of the week um, talk about why we created the video before I go into each one just that, I mean, you kind of mentioned it, but I know a lot of people. Yeah, um, I think everyone has a, a good plan leading up to the Open. They've done a lot of the work. They've trained now, but the in-between is 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 difficult for a lot of people. They don't, how much do I need to rest? Do I still need to train hard on certain days? Can I train too much that's going to affect my other workout attempts? Yeah. So, again, like I think it just depends on what the person's goal is. So, someone like a games athlete like still needs to maintain a level of fitness yeah. throughout this five weeks right versus someone regional like to explain how that might be different versus someone who's doing just an open performance that's trying to have fun yeah for sure and i've also tested a bunch of people and seen uh fitness levels drop dramatically through the open like after you know a week-long taper or something you do some retesting and they're way off the numbers which probably means that what they're doing to maintain their fitness qualities is not good enough so I'll start with the games. Almost always I'm Thursday off or active recovery for games people. Uh, that's just a logistical thing. I do have a lot of people that fall on Thursdays off, but it's just really so that on the day that it's released, they're resting so that they can hit an AM session on Friday. Um, they hit the open workout in the AM. I, I do it in the AM first thing. They're most fresh. They're coming off an off day. They should have from whoever tested it a, a score, an indication where you know where they need to get to, and mm -hmm. you just get it out of the way. Then that leaves just in case something bad happens. It leaves the most amount of time to get back to another retest on Monday in the event something goes wrong. If it goes well, it leaves your you know noon p.m. session to be training based, and then you know a.m. noon p.m and gives you a full training weekend. Now, what goes in here for a games athlete is dependent upon whatever energy system, strength, uh, whatever's tested in the open test. I mean, if they do 
150 chest bar pull ups and 150 overhead squats, so something like 15.2. We obviously know that their uh, capacity to breathe, their squat capacity, their lats, their biceps, their grip is all going to be taxed pretty heavily here. So your noon and PM session is going to be dictated based on supporting what that athlete's overall goals are. But so, like that, in that example, like maybe you're doing swim intervals and an active recovery hike or run or something to loosen the legs up so that you can come in the next day and do upper body pressing and pulling, uh, a Metcon with deadlifts and handstand push-ups or strict presses and bench presses. Like, so you're really waiting for this as a coach. I actually write probably 20 designs on Friday morning. I'm waiting for this to govern what goes here. Now, if that goes well, your Monday through Wednesday is normal training. Uh, what I normally do is like, this is my highest volume, highest intensity. I'd call this like moderate volume intensity. And then I, I usually just taper on this day. So there'll be like isometric gymnastics, uh, lower intensity energy systems, uh, you know, running skill work. So you could still train throughout the course of the day, but the volume is pretty low. It's not super hard. Their body's recovering. The contraction volume of all the CrossFit stuff is going down here, so their joints should feel a little bit better. Then obviously we know this is our offer and active recovery day. So we're still setting them up for success in their test, but we're not obsess obsessing over it. Mm -hmm. So that's usually the kind of weekly layout that I have. Um, we have no Chick-fil-A here on Sunday. <laughs> CTP thought that was necessary so everyone knew uh, you can't be eating that because it's not open. It. You don't want to drive uh, to Chick-fil-A <laughs> yeah, and realize. Yeah, you want your little treat and it's not there. Uh, but in reality, this is uh, just an off day. Um, so that's kind of how I would structure almost every games athlete. Uh, it gives me the most variability with understanding that I can get a lot of training volume in here around what the test is. It gives me an opportunity in the event that this was bad to retest it. And I still can train pretty hard. Mm -hmm. These games athletes are actually tapering into the open. So like my games athletes right now, the ones that I'm 99% sure are gonna qualify if every, like as long as they stay healthy and don't get sick and stuff. Um, they're tapered after competitions right now. So they're, you know, their volume's just starting to tick up. So we're just starting to get into real training blocks. They're only really doing two weeks of training leading into the open, which is very different from the other categories. You want to add anything to this? No, I guess just the caveat that you mentioned earlier about um, it's tough to say like this is someone who is guaranteed yeah. a spot in the open. So I, th I think just to make it clear that like this is someone who you are 99% sure this yeah. is what their structure and design would look like. Yeah, there's a, the Mike Tyson quote, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Uh, I apply that to this as well. So what happens if shit goes wrong for a games athlete that you're pretty sure is going to make it? Uh, so let's say you get into week three and they're sitting in, you know, 22nd place in the region. And you're like, oh my God, what happened? instantaneously you restructure this. The volume goes lower, you taper for every test here, you retest them and you basically take them from the category they're in and switch them into the regionals, which I think is kind of a, a good segue to go in uh, to the regional people. Got it, yep. yeah, I, I didn't think about that, that's awesome. What, in, in the case that something is going wrong. Yeah, So okay. it happens. I mean, we plan all year long and i mean the longer you coach the more you realize like i put this plan in place it didn't work i write a new plan it doesn't work i write a new plan it doesn't work eventually you get into a good model you get into a rhythm but uh the same thing happens in the open you're constantly trying to figure out what to do when nothing is going right cool cool all right next step so this athlete now is someone who's trying to get the best performance they can to get to the regional level yeah. um maybe they're bubble or you know they've been there before but it's it's definitely they're not certain they're not certainly going to get there yeah so this category is going to be a kind of similar to the open category actually um again almost everyone i coach now through the open will go thursday off it just makes the most sense some people do the test thursday evening so they have the most time before the retest on monday if they're I, like West Coast or something. Yeah, either West Coast or like some people have Thursday night lights or some people just train in the evening. So they don't want to go to bed without like, 
they get the test mm -hmm. and they don't want to go to bed thinking about it. So they just do it right away. Um, that'd be the only caveat, but I'm just going to, I'll keep that one off the table. So, all right. So we still keep our AM open attempt. Um, sometimes if this is a PM trainee, the only difference with these people is in the morning, I'll have them go in, I'll have them loosen up. I'll have them plan their pacing strategies. So go in, do a round of the workout, time it, do it at, you know, 70% effort. Okay. You know, where do you want to break everything up? How do you want your layout to look like really get everything dialed in and then they'll test it in the PM for the people that already have thought about their pacing strategy. Uh, they'll just come in. They'll usually hit it in the morning. Some people also do Friday night lights because they want the environment. Um, but this whole day then just becomes open plus like active recovery. Recovery, you know, because you want to flush the system. You, you don't want to just be stagnant, just do the open test. Um, Saturday, we're up here. We're training with this games athlete um, on a regional level person. This is just maintenance training. So we do want to keep our capacities high in the event that they make regionals. It will almost always be something that is not in here. So as an example, let's say it's squat snatches and muscle ups. So we have really complex skill. There's some lower body pulling and squatting with that movement and upper body pulling. So here we might just do like some very light deadlifts at a tempo, some strict handstand push-ups, some toes to bar, some EMOMs. We're just basically trying to get skills in there. It's not a for time setting. It's not max effort. Uh, I don't want anything to get sore from that session. So if a training session for a regional athlete that you're coaching generally does a hundred contractions in a 20 minute EMOM, then I'm probably going to like 60% of what they would normally do in training. Um, I, it's just an arbitrary number, but it should be uh, low enough that they don't feel like it's a stress for training. Then we're Sunday off again. Again, there's no Chick-fil-A. Uh, that goes for all people of all divisions. <laughs> I thought it was uh, just games athletes. Yeah, yeah, just games. They you show up to the game as a games athlete. They're like, oh, you went to the games? No, we can't serve you. Today. Sorry, man. Yeah. Um, then here's where we kind of have to get a little bit more complex. So the preference, again, would be that the uh, AM attempt in the open for a Monday regional athlete. The problem with doing this is people withhold their scores and you're kind of on the bubble. So sometimes there's an advantage to waiting longer and longer and longer and pushing this back farther and doing it like right before they finish and not posting your score. I'm usually not about the games. I don't really think that you have, you have enough scores at, at 9am to know where you got to go and to know how far. I don't think that playing a numbers game is going to help you get one more rep, but some people believe that it does help. And if you do believe that it does help, then you should take advantage of that belief. If I can get them to do the open in the morning, then their PM I'm doing hard training. So I have to do this because if they make it to regionals and all they've done is basically focus on this and this for five weeks, they're going to be deconditioned. And I think that's a big problem. I mean, I, I know everyone like, you know, they, they blow all their energy just getting there and then they show up and they're flat, they're under trained, they don't feel good. Uh, even though there's enough time to train leading into regionals now, I think that in order to take a good training cycle, you need to make sure your fitness holds up for a period of time. So there'll be hard training here and then this will be a hard training day. So this will be my peak intensity and peak volume every week. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, it kind of sucks that you might not get their priorities here because their priorities might have gotten tested in the open workout. We'd obviously want, if the world worked the way that we wanted to, we'd want all of their priorities to get here, hit here so that they're prepared for regionals, but we got to design this training relative to what comes out. I'm not a big, I don't believe in the whole, like, Hey, I did 300 wall balls on Monday, but it's okay to do my, you know, heavy back squats on Tuesday and it won't matter. I do know we need to be uh, strong under levels of fatigue, but I think that 
Uh, there's a time and a place for every training year to do that. And in the open is not one of those times. Uh, and I think there's a, a level of athlete that dictates it. And then um, my Wednesday will be the same for a regional athlete and a games athlete. So that's the same thing. Uh, what would you say to someone that has some fear that this might be too much intense training because they're scared that it's going to mess with their actual open intents? Yeah, I mean, I think if that is the case, that you're not really a regional bubble athlete and you're really an open performance athlete. Um, I, I don't think that... The way I look at most regional athletes is they're probably doing a minimum of 10 hard sessions a week. And if you're used to doing a minimum of 10 hard sessions a week, we know we have two that are probably a little bit higher intensity that you have. Uh, but now we have three, four, five... And that's it. So you're still at a 50% reduction in volume. Uh, yeah. The body and mind, the way that it operate is that it perceives change as stressful. So if you're used to high volume and high intensity and you taper too much, you actually will create a stress response in the system and, and decrease your fitness as a result of just mismanaging your training relative to irrational thoughts. So, so people think, I'll get tired if I work out. I'm like, well, you work out all year round you don't mm. want to change everything just because yeah. you watch think that you'll get tired <laughs> yeah yeah or or watch this video again yeah. yeah i actually talked to mike about that before the video and said like well this is what we do with our athletes and it mimics our athlete training week so make sure you take that into consideration when you're kind of structuring your week like this should kind of mimic what you've been doing year round we're lucky enough to be involved in a sport where our training is very similar to our sport so once you kind of know like okay well these are just target workouts in the week you should have target workouts in your actual training weeks as well where you go a little bit higher intensity we're actually doing four times stuff and you're actually just practicing the sport cool cool yeah great open performance uh athletes those that yeah. may maybe want to just do their best in the open yeah so um, big big I a large group of people there. Yeah, I, so I'm not gonna really talk that much about fun. Uh, I think the only difference for the fun athlete in the open is that you really shouldn't retest the workouts. Um, so that means you're just basically setting your week up that you should, you know, train here, train here, train here, off, whichever day. You know, I, I think from a training perspective, it makes more sense to do the open on Friday and train around it on Saturday. But if you're used to training five days a week and you wanna have fun, you should train here too, if you're gonna do it on Saturday and then do the open. And just make sure that this training isn't gonna impact your score over here. But you're used to doing your workouts, you know, you normally work out on Saturday, having worked out on Friday, then just do it that way. You know, if you wanna have fun and you don't think it's fun to stay up till 9 p.m. and work out in a crowded room with a bunch of lights because it's Friday Night Lights Week, then don't do that because it's not fun for you. I mean, I think you gotta kinda of define that word for yourself and figure out what that means. I think most people say they wanna have fun, but really they wanna do their best and they wanna win. So if that's the case, you kind of are gonna be the performance person that we'll talk about. So I think the big, the big thing here is that the entire five weeks so for the games athletes, they're training through it. For the regional athletes, they're trying to find a balance between training through it and peaking their performance in the open. And for the open people, they're only trying to peak for the open. It's a five week long competition. So if that's the case, what you're trying to do is make sure that your fitness stays at its peak level for five straight weeks. That's almost impossible to do, but the best way that we've found to do it is you put the open test as far apart as you can get them. So Friday and Monday. So these are our open tests. These are our priorities every week. So what fits around it is all ensuring that these are good. So we're still Thursday off. This is still a taper day. This is a maintenance day. And then this is your only training day in the week. And what do you train here? training. Uh, the only thing you trained here is anything that didn't get tested in this week's open. And as the open workouts come out, you cross things off the list that you don't need to hit in these training sessions. So 
I think there's been 16 total movements used in the open, and let's say at a maximum two new ones come out this year, there's 18 total movements. If it's a triplet in week one, then there's 15 potential things that go into here. And then in week two, another two come out, there's 13. So by the end of the open, in weeks three, four, and five, well, not five, in three and four, these training sessions should be very, very, very close to 100% certain that you're doing something in them that's going to be in the open test in weeks four and five after it. So this is your only training day. You need to make sure that the intensity and volume of this is slightly lower than normal training cycles because we don't want any accumulated fatigue to build. We just want to make sure we're polishing off the skill. Okay. So um, what about the case that last year they repeated a movement? Um, what do you have to say to that about touching on things that have already been in previous workouts. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is a possibility. And I think that they got a lot of flack for uh, bar facing burpees being the determining factor in 40% of the testing body and in a well-rounded fitness test. Um, so it's possible. I just think that what we can do as coaches is play the statistics game. And if we're playing the statistics game, we're better off uh, on a, an, a a huge group of athletes with a huge number of potential tests. We're better off if we uh, start to cross movements off the list. Mm -hmm. And if they want to just add those into warm ups and cool downs, I'm okay with it. But yeah. that's a low likelihood that it happens. Yeah, and I guess you could also look at it like it's not like people got to the end of it and thought, man, it came out again. I should have done bar facing burpees every week because it could have come up again. No one can predict that. Yeah. Um, that you're not really going to get that much better at it over the period of four weeks when you're still doing all this other training. So yeah, I think it's just one of those with the open, like you said, you get punched in the face and yeah. you just got to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, something's going to come out that you didn't prepare for. You're going to get into the middle of the workout. It's going to feel, you know, worse than you had planned for it to feel. That is just reality in this sport. I mean, one of the primary taglines they use is, uh, you know, unknown and unknowable people always say get comfortable with the uncomfortable like these are just realities of the sport that you chose and if that's the case we do with our trainings we try to minimize the likelihood that one of those things happen but you can't take the you can't take the error value to zero percent you just take it as close as you can there and you teach your athletes how to have a really strong psyche with dealing with chaos the worse you are at dealing with chaos and the more excuses you make probably the worse you're going to perform if you're like Oh, I've never done this movement before. It's like, well, Dick, you know, there's 300,000 people in the open, 200,000 probably didn't. So like, just figure out how to not whine, get them, get as comfortable <laughs> as you can in your warm up, and just hit it. Like it, yeah. it is what it is. And you got to kind of have that, um, I don't know, discompassionate way of dealing with it, which is hard as a coach. Sometimes you just want to tell your, your athletes, just shut up and do it. Uh, but you can't, so you got to kind of, well, I do, but <laughs> you got to kind of figure out, uh, the best way to, to deal with your own psyche, to optimize your own performance. Cool. I think this is super helpful. Uh, we covered a bunch of different scenarios. Um, for those that want more advice during the open about pacing, warm ups, cool downs, nutrition, um, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the webinar series that oh, yeah. we're doing each week. Yeah. Um, so I started uh, coaching a bunch of people through the open. And I think in 2012, I realized that uh, this really common thing was happening. The workout would get released and people would be like, Hey coach, what do you think? I'm like, I think a lot about this. Like I think about like all the potential limiters, how you should pace it. Um, so in 2013, I started for all of my own clients, just creating a webinar. I would go up, I would create like, Hey, these are the, these are the limitations you're going to experience in the workout. Uh, these are pacing strategies that I think about. Uh, this is uh, what I think about with regards to your setup. And uh, that's just kind of grown every year where now all my coaches contribute to it. We make sure that all of our training think tank athletes watch the webinar, then email their coach their strategy and plan, and then their coach goes through the plan and either agrees with it or makes changes. Uh, this year, we're just going to give it out to everybody. Uh, it's it's all of our coaches just basically brainstorming 
on Thursday evening, right after the test comes out. We sit down, we record it, we watch uh, what the elite did in their strategy, and we give thoughts so that you could be a little bit better prepared. Um, I also talk a little bit about this um, for anybody that's watching. If the workout comes out, I'm like, hey, you know, if you're if you're going to repeat on Monday, I'd avoid doing this on Saturday. If you're not going to repeat, these are the types of things that I would test and. Um, we really just want to try to give a, a better way for you to execute throughout the uh, open and feel like you can get your best score and set yourself up for regional or the games or just get through it unscathed so you can keep training and hammering it. Sweet. Uh, do we know where it's going to be signed yeah, up it, yet or anything? Or? Yeah, it's uh, if you stay on uh, Facebook and Instagram, uh, we will post it out. Anybody that's bought anything from Training Think Tank who's on our email list, we'll make sure that we send that out. Uh, we will put out a Facebook ad. All you'll have to do is register. So you click on the button, it'll take you to the registration page on trainingthinktank.com. Uh, we'll probably include the link on this video to that webinar. Uh, and you just basically sign up for it. And then every week when it's released, you'll get an email from JP at trainingthinktank.com saying the email's up on the site. You go in, you log in, and you go back into the webinar and watch it there. Cool. Thanks, Max. Hope yeah, to see you there.